Hello and welcome to this video on a weird archaeological discovery known as the Scottish Frankenstein mummies. The remains are so named because they have been not only assembled from six distinct and different bodies, but are a product of deliberate mummification. This in Europe is a very rare phenomena and makes these discoveries very unique, interesting and an incredibly isolated sample of phenomena that's rarely if ever seen in Europe around this time frame. The mummified remains themselves were first discovered in 2001. That was an amazing discovery in and of itself given how rare they are, and especially in the time frame we're talking about. This then led to a 10 year mystery where a variety of things were not adding up. The bones themselves were odd, but why were they mummified, and why did certain things not seem right? This then led to more investigation of not only the site where they were discovered, which is an 11th century house at a site called Clad Halan. The discovery of the remains themselves begins to give some idea as to what's happened. They were buried 300 to 600 years after the bodies initially died. The remains were mummified somewhere around 1600 BCE and 1300 BCE, that is for the male and female remains respectively. In the process of investigating just what they had on hand, scientists had been able to figure out that the bodies had been preserved in a peat bog. This is itself not an unusual phenomena, and we do see other remains in Europe. What was unusual here is that they had been put in the peat bog for just long enough to become preserved, and then they were taken out. What becomes odd is the fact that the bodies were then buried to remove the material specifically the fleshy biological material, leaving only the skeletons, and that these were then reburied again several hundred years later. This means we have a period of practices ranging over hundreds of years to get to what we've found so far. The bodies themselves still had bones that were articulating, that means that they were attached to each other, and that's another odd phenomena, and it is a direct product of the fact that they were preserved in the peat bogs. The peat bog is an interesting phenomenon and way to approach preservation completely different from how the Egyptians mummified remains, or in fact how most other cultures and societies have mummified their remains. The peat bog is just slightly acidic, enough so that it won't destroy the bones, but it will prevent pathogens from developing, primarily bacteria. The way they could identify it how and why they were mummified is how the bones had been demineralized. There was a thin outer margin of about 2 millimeters, which had lost its mineral content. This is consistent with being in the peat bog for between 6 and 18 months, where the acid eats away at that mineral content. We also know they had to have been reburied in soil since the soft tissue, that is both the connective tissue between the bones and the flesh as we would know it, is broken down. Beyond the two bodies found of a male and female, there was a teenager and a three-year-old child. These skeletons were more decomposed, there is far less information on these other remains. What gave away the fact that the two older, larger specimens were from completely different individuals was something to do with the female skeleton. The jaw just did not fit with the rest of the skull and it's unlikely to have been purely pathogenic. This then led to the obvious question of, could they try DNA testing? Modern DNA testing is far more economical and efficient with tiny samples. This means that they didn't need to do anywhere near as much damage as they would have 10 or even 20 years ago. They took DNA from the jawbone, skull, arm and leg. What they were able to find out was that not only did the people who made up these parts have different DNA, which means multiple individuals, but none of them were related. To find one skeleton like this is bizarre and unusual. To find two is inexplicable. All the more so when we don't know why they were prepared this way, why they were preserved, and why they were buried under a house. There are some theories as to why. One of these is largely symbolic and it was there to be a literal example and depiction of the combination of different familial ancestries. 
a symbolic ancestor of sorts. They would take parts from different lineages and combine them physically. There are other more pragmatic theories, such as simply requiring replacement parts, and that these were taken from conveniently found bodies. While this is a very unique and unusual example of mummification and the combination of different remains, the phenomena is not unusual overall in the world. We see mummification across just about every culture and society at different stages throughout history. This is simply one very isolated and unusual example that we don't yet fully understand and hopefully we'll be able to find more evidence and information in the future. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions below.